this, you know, there's one thing I'd like to show you, but I don't know what it'd do to your camera. And that's the inscription on here. Right there. All right, earlier I had talked about the uh, inscription on the wall where it said, God grant Saddam victory. Now, it says that in four places in the foyer, but every chandelier in this building has this inscription. This is God grant us victory. And it just says it over and over and over. God grant us victory. God grant us victory. Every chandelier has this on it. The big chandelier in the foyer, and even this little chandelier here, it's God grant us victory. All right, what you're looking at now is a different view of the chandelier. The chandelier has 256 lights in it and is held up by a wire that's just a little bit bigger than your pinky. And as you look up at the chandelier, you can see clearly the two rows of Saddam's initials in wood. And then around the top, again, it's Allah Akbar. Now, the chandelier is hollow inside. There's an access port on the roof, and there is a um, plank that goes out over the center of the chandelier, and there's an electric winch that can lower the chandelier down to the ground. Now, we do not use that uh, to uh, work on the chandelier simply because of... Uh, the possibility that the uh, cable will snap or uh, the winch will fail. But uh, there's no crystal in the chandelier. It's cut glass and plastic. And uh, it's the largest uh, chandelier in this building and by far the most intricate. And uh, all the way around the chandelier, the gold discs all refer to El Fa, talking about the battle. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, on every small light in the chandelier and all the way around the chandelier itself, it keeps repeating over and over, God grant us victory, God grant us victory. Okay, we were looking down the hallway here and we talk a lot about letters from home, uh, drawings from the children, and here's this whole long wall filled with them, with signatures. What does this mean to you guys when you're over here? Uh, really what this means to us is that we're still in the thoughts and, the, and uh, everyday memories of our loved ones back home. Um, you know, this is just a display of you know, what they do uh, back home to show their their uh, their dedication to to knowing we're not forgotten while we're over here, and they're thinking about us, and we're in their thoughts. And to us, that means very very much um, for being away from family members and friends. Lieutenant Colonel, your comments. Uh, thanks again, to all these children too. Right? Oh yeah, I mean these children. I, I just want to say thanks to them because I mean it, it took a lot of time and effort to to do something like this, and uh, I've been here on. Uh, three tours now, and uh, whenever I give a palace tour, I always bring people by this wall, and a lot of times they'll just stop and look. Occasionally you'll see somebody who recognizes a name. Uh, I gave a tour earlier this month to um, Ambassador Jeffrey's wife. Uh, she's a school teacher uh, by profession, and so she, she stopped and read every uh, one of these and was just absolutely uh, blown away by the fact that these children took the time to write and uh, thank the soldiers for uh, what they're doing, their time and their effort, their sacrifice here. And uh, it, it's just amazing because, you know, with, with all of the uh, issues that are going on in the world, the fact that somebody will still take the time and remember that, you know, we're still here yeah. uh, is just absolutely fantastic and it's uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah, and the children across the country are doing a great oh, yeah. job. I they have a bunch are. I have bringing over from school in Colorado and Florida. Yeah. 
yeah. to bring to uh, one or two brigades in Afghanistan. Yeah, that's just absolutely wonderful. Good. And one more place I'd like to show you is uh, a bathroom. I mentioned oh, earlier yeah. that uh, there are 29 bathrooms here. And uh, I wanted to show you one of the special ones. Okay, let's go. On into the bathroom. This is incredible. Right here, uh, this is the uh, largest of the 29 bathrooms. And what's interesting about the bathrooms in this palace is a bathroom is not just a sink and a stall. It's much more. Uh, this bathroom has a central, uh, for lack of a better phrase, a waiting room. It has two wings, and on each wing are five rooms. Each room is a private bathroom. So you have a total of ten stalls here. And uh, interesting enough, the two wings do not connect. But here's another interesting point about the bathrooms. The bathrooms on the third floor have no showers and no bathtubs. The only showers and the only bathtubs in this building are on the first and second floors because those were the first two floors that were completed. Those were part of the original 200,000 square feet. When Saddam expanded the palace to 450,000 square feet, he scrimped on the bathtubs and the showers. As a matter of fact, the back side of the third floor has no bathrooms at all. They were in a hurry to complete the palace in time for Saddam's birthday. So what they did was they just walled everything over. So there's a, probably half of the third floor that has no bathroom at all. And then uh, no bathtub, no shower up here. Can we walk back to the Oh, of course, of course. Now, what's interesting is when we arrived here in 2003, the uh, bathroom fixtures, they looked uh, like gold. And so people uh, thought they were gold and they took a lot of them. But they turned out to be gilded brass, which means they're not worth a whole lot. But if you look at the fixtures, uh, you've got the gold tinted uh, paint, and uh, we're going to go into one of the uh, stalls. And you can see here, uh, this was one of the uh, normal bathrooms. It's like a working one here. Yeah. And what's interesting is all the bathrooms, they have windows. You can look out, but nobody can look in unless you have the window open. The windows are specially treated so that when the window is closed, nobody can see out, but you can see in. Lieutenant Colonel Jerry Brooks, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Thank you for this great tour. And I wouldn't want to end this without giving you an opportunity to say hi to family and friends back home. Okay. Great. Uh, I want to say hi to uh, my wife, Kristen. Don't worry, honey. The pregnancy's almost over. Uh, she's due to give birth to our second child in the next uh, couple weeks. Hi to my son, Sam. He's 17 and a half months. Uh, my mom, Carol, there in Harrisonburg. My sister, Michelle, and brother-in-law, David. And uh, my uh, nephew, Wes, there in Harrisonburg. And to all the people of Harrisonburg, hey, I'll be home in December. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Folks, I want to say again, uh, help us get these stories out. Uh, from here, we're going to be interviewing on the next segment, Major General Buchanan. So I want to thank Embry-Riddle, Aeronautical University, for making this trip possible. Embry-Riddle.edu and Mark Leiden with DoThisGetHired.com who introduced us. And uh, we're reporting here on TalkingWithHeroes.com from Iraq. <laughs>